Welcome back to Juice's Arthropods. I'm Juice, and I'm really excited today to discuss the Aresis species of quote-unquote velvet spiders, their care, pros, and cons. So Juice, why do you specify the Aresis species? Well, because velvet spider is a common name. You know I hate common names. And there is a boatload of spiders that fall under velvet spider moniker. You've seen them all over the internet from tarantula cat or uh, slightly venomous or any of these other influencers. They all have a uh, version of those or have had versions of them in the past. The reason that I want to discuss the Aresa species specifically is they are the more common version I've seen in the United States. Over in Europe, you'll have a completely different species oftentimes. And most of these actually originate from over the pond. So that's one of those things that I want to discuss the Aresa species, Aresa species specifically, and then go into some of the pros and cons that I have had of actually having raised some of these myself. So let's first get into diet. Here's a fun little fact about these guys. They're babies forever. So fruit flies, be ready to be just in fruit fly hell for the next I don't know, six to eight months, probably. They are not a big species. I would say at fully grown female might get as big as uh, an average adult, um, you know, Phytopus regius or any of those sort of jumping spiders. So they're really not that big. So when it comes to actual diet, you know, they will eat a varied diet as they get older, but the males do not get big. So you might be stuck feeding them, you know, blue bottle spikes or, you know, fruit flies for essentially their entire life. Now, one thing I cannot stress enough about these guys, uh, they are ferocious eaters. So when you see one or you get one, your first instinct is going to be, well, they're so cute. Like how big, like how bad could they be? Oh, they're brutal. Like they're absolute predators and they have no problem taking down anything bigger than them. So keep this in mind when you're considering what to feed them is that essentially they're going to look pretty bloated like a tick. That's what kind of a good indication that you need to stop feeding them if that happens. But for the most part, these guys can take down something quite sizable. So I would say if you have any wax worms, those will be totally fine. Um, bait like horn worms when you first get them and they're really, really tiny, you can feed those to them easily. I mean, I would even say like if they're an, over an inch long, Long, that'll be totally fine. The female adults will get a little bit bigger. At that size, I would say like small to medium-sized dubia roaches they'll have no problem with. So overall, I mean, get weird with it. These guys, though, are not going to be um, like a tarantula where you throw it in there and they're going to kind of run in. If it's not in their web, it doesn't exist. So just make sure that if you are doing that, you're getting it in their web or you're getting creatures like crickets that will jump into the web. If you have dubias, you're going to throw them in the dirt and they're just not going to do anything and they're going to bury themselves. So that would be my only recommendation when it comes to diet. So next, I want to talk about care and uh, cage requirements, those sort of things. See these little boxes in front of me? I don't honestly recommend this. This is a little bit too tall. One thing to know about the velvet spiders or AKA ladybird spider or I say a Reese's species be <laughs> because one, it's hilarious to say. And secondly, because it's just awesome. Um, these guys do not need tall. They really don't. Like you can, I would say any of the boxes that you can see, uh, hopefully over in the frame over there, you know, a tarantula cribs, anything for like a terrestrial spider, totally fine. When people get these, oftentimes what they're doing is they're kind of thinking like, oh, well, this must be like my my jumping spider, like my Phytopus regius or my, you know, Phytopus audax or anything like that. They're not. They're really, all they do, they live their entire lives in just moss. So they are used to being low to the ground. So they do not need height. If you want to do it for you, that's totally fine. Like they're not going to fall and die out of these things. They're just going to use the space that they have. But honestly, they're going to stay in their little tiny cave that they create for themselves. And they're going to create the most adorable little like web blanket that they'll just kind of like hide from you in. So really, you're just wasting space. So I would say even something this tall, is is honestly just a waste of height. You really don't need that. I would say for something like this, you could probably have half the height, but maybe twice as much width and you'd be totally fine. When it comes to what they need, they need absolutely, and we're going to talk more about this in humid, they need dry soil. This is a very arid species. And what I mean by that is they're literally from the Balkans and like the Mediterranean areas. So they're used to hot and dry and nothing for a while. So a couple reasons I mentioned that is because one of the number one ways you can kill these guys 
is by giving them water all of the time. They're just not used to that. They're used to like, you know, a little bit of that sea spray or anything like that, that you might get off like the, you know, maybe like the fog rolling in over the hills or something. But other than that, I mean, I, I apologize. Clearly, I don't know anything about the Balkans, but whatever the temperature is there is what it's going to be like all the time. But they are not used to the humidity of, say, Georgia or anything like that. So... You just don't want to give them supplementary water. They're going to get all their water needs from the things that you're feeding them, which is why I had mentioned earlier, you want to kind of have a varied diet on foods. I always um, offer hornworms to anything that will eat them just because they're just so good for any kind of hydration. So I would offer those on occasion. Waxworms will be good too. Silkworms are amazing for, I think, every species on the planet. So just make sure you're having that diverse diet. But when it comes to care requirements, honestly... These guys are super easy. The easiest way that you're going to kill them, though, is by getting them too wet. Now, for humidity, I really just touched base on it a couple seconds ago. Ultimately, what you need is a lot of ventilation. Imagine like you were to live in a beach with a lot of wind and you live on a tiny piece of moss on a rock and you've made a cute little blanket on the inside of this little moss that you have on your rock. And basically anything that passes by and falls stupidly into your web that's what you eat. That's their life. They will stay in that spot their entire life and do nothing. When they have their babies, those babies will basically take a balloon parachute and it will fly them away into different locations and then they will just live in that area. So these guys are not like avid hunters. They're not like tarantulas where they won't roam. They're not like jumping spiders where they need a lot of room. These guys are just going to be like the trapdoor spider equivalent of a, an, a, of a true spider. They're just going to be very... Uh, boring to look at until they're absolutely the cutest freaking thing on the planet. But Juice, how long do they live? Ugh, not. I'm really kind of sad to say this. Not a long time, but longer than jumping spiders. So the males will live roughly one, one and a half, two years max. The females will live about three to four years. This is going to be a problem for you if you decide you want to breed these guys because the males will achieve sexual maturity two years prior to the females. Keep this math in mind here in a second. So when you're deciding to buy some of these very expensive spiders, you know what ends up happening? You have a lot of mature males all of a sudden. And weirdly enough, that's actually a huge benefit in this actual, in the, in the breeding communities because right now, no one's really trying to breed them. I'm trying to. I'm sure some of you watching this are as well. Some people have, but most of the velvet spiders slash the Orisa species yeah, <laughs> funny every time. Uh, all of those are currently mostly wild caught. So you're not getting a lot of people that are actually breeding these because of some of the cons we're going to talk about later. Um, so one of the biggest problems you're going to have with longevity is when you're trying to breed them, you're going to have females that aren't going to mature for another two years after your spider's already dead. So if you do want to breed them, I highly recommend finding friends in the community so you guys can kind of work your magic back and forth. So what about fecundity and how many babies? This is where things get real, real confusing and really unsure. There's a lot of misinformation out there. And I'm going to be honest with you, even on this one, I'm going to tell you the best of my knowledge and I'm probably still wrong. So please, if you're an entomologist, correct me. So when it comes to these, these amazing, absolutely cute spiders... What I have heard, and again, I don't know for a fact, so please correct me. My understanding of this is essentially the problem with fecundity is that they will only have limited babies. So when people are normally breeding spiders, you're talking a couple hundred. They'll have anywhere between 30 to 100. But the problem is the female dies every time because, and this is where things get real confusing, there are specific species of the Aresis or the Aresidae species that they regurgitate their internal organs to their babies. When it comes to research, everything I could find on these guys, there's nothing out there that said that it was anything but this one particular species in the Aresidae. But when I continue to go further into the Walkenary and the, the Moravicus and all of these other types... There was absolutely no information on it whatsoever. I just feel like at this time, there's kind of a question mark here. I don't really know, and I'm really, really hoping that you guys do. So please let me know what I can tell you. 
the males are significantly smaller than the females. So as you are, you know, growing these guys up, what you will find is that the males will basically become like a giant inflated strawberry. Once your male molts, you'll know it. He's going to be very bright red, literally looking like he's got a strawberry in his back. The females will just have like a, a red line that they'll essentially get. Some of you have seen them where they might even have a ring. But if you see the ring, it doesn't dictate male or female. That's just a color pattern that some of them have. You will know because the females are the ones that you see that are super cute and about a quarter size. The males don't get much bigger than I would say maybe a dime or a nickel at best. So they don't really get that big. But when it comes to the longevity of fecundity and those sort of things, these species are really cute, and really great. But there's a huge question mark on, okay, so they live for two to four years, but how long does it take to get babies and what happens when the babies are done? So I apologize. I can't help you in this department, but I will in the next couple of years. Now I'm going to talk about pros. And man, I've got a laundry list of pros for these guys with very minimal cons, honestly. When it comes to pros, these are the cutest spiders on the freaking planet. Okay. You know how cute a jumping spider is? Imagine a fat, chunky little jumping spider that just puts a little blanket of silk over its body when it wants you to go away. And it's just this awesome goth black with a cute little black mustache. It is the most adorable spider, hands down, on the planet. You want to hold a spider? Hold these guys. They don't like it. But they're really not going to be able to hurt you until they bite you, which might sting a little bit. But these guys are so cute. One thing to note, though, they are much faster than their chubby little legs look like they would be because they essentially look like a bloated dick that has disguised itself as a spider. So when it comes to the pro, these things are so cute. They're making me laugh thinking about them. So really, really cute species. A second pro, these guys are so easy to take care of, honestly. I understand that a lot of people have bought these and they have died. The problem is ultimately because there's just not a lot of information or care guides out there for them. But most of the time, unfortunately, when you've killed your little guy, it's because you were just giving them too much water. When it comes to actual care, leaving them alone, offering them hydration, uh, you know, hydrationable foods that are gut loaded and have plenty of that sort of thing, they're going to do just fine. I've even sprinkled water in there, I would say once a week, just because I don't trust people and they're totally fine. And I've had some of these guys in the bigger cages now for over a year. So, and, but now keep in mind, this is my humidity and temperature all of the time. So when it comes to pros, if your humidity and temperature are at this, this is going to be a really easy creature to take care of. If it differs from this, though, you might have a harder time. So reduce the humidity if you live in Louisiana. Uh, increase the humidity if you live in the desert. And otherwise, pros are these guys are so easy to take care of. A third thing, because they're really fast, they're really cool to watch eat. Anybody who has ever loved a spider has thrown some sort of bug inside their web before. These guys, because they're just they're hilarious to watch. Just book it out of their web and catch their prey. And they're so freaking strong. Like it's crazy the size of the things that they will take down. Just keep in mind, don't give them too big of prey because otherwise they will eat all of it and then they will be just this swollen grape of a creature. So all in all, pros, lots of pros. Cute, strong, adorable, good eaters. But now let's get to the cons. So what are the cons? The cons are the fact that breeding them is a pain in the ass. Another con is they don't live long. If you're used to tarantulas, these are going to be a tragedy waiting to happen. But while you have them, though, they're going to be very cool, very cute, and they are definitely something that people are going to want to talk to you about. These are just a very awesome creature. I don't know anybody who's ever seen a velvet spider and been like, nah, I'm good. If you know someone like that, don't be friends with them. They're a horrible person. Back to the cons, though. I would say the other con is the fact that they just, you really can't create as elaborate, um, you know, types of terrariums as you might with some other things. 
but get weird with it as long as it's arid. You're just not going to be able to have a cool paludarium or anything like that. that well, not paludarium, but, but like a terrarium that's got a lot of high, uh, humidity. You're not going to be able to pull that off with these guys just because they do require very arid climate. So, hey, come up with a cool, like, almost semi-desert uh, theme and you'll be totally fine. Other than that, there's another big con. That's the price. These guys are about $160 to $225, depending on who you purchase them from. They are very expensive because, again, they are rare as hell. It was very hard for me to find all of these. It took probably six different breeders to find them. And luckily, I found one person wholesaling a bunch of babies because that's most of what you're going to find are babies that can fit into these little tiny boxes. And they're going to be about the size of a single fruit fly. That's a very hard pill to swallow when it costs you $160. So when it comes to con, the biggest one is there's not enough people breeding them right now. I'm trying, guys, but there needs to be more of us out there. And ultimately, there's going to be a lot of times where we're going to have to start trading with each other because our males are going to breed or are going to be at sexual maturity far sooner than our females are. So to recap, let's keep it arid, guys. Remember that the females are way bigger than the males, and I'm telling you that. So if you decide to breed them, you'll be very shocked. Um, the males are always going to have that giant red strawberry look to them. These are great pets. They're expensive. And do not give them too much water. If you can handle all of those things, then they're going to be a fantastic pet for you at the end of the day. So I hope you liked our video here. I know it was probably, I'm going to say short, but ultimately, these guys are a very simple pet. So if you liked it, like and subscribe, and I hope to see you real soon.